So for this challenge, we're going to be looking at scales in D3. And what scales allow you to do is essentially like squashing all your bars or all your graphics into an area of a fixed size. So I'm going to show an example to try and get this point across. So let's say I have an array of data here. Very simple, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I have a canvas, which is an SVG with a height and width of 500 that I created in the body. And what I've done is I've told it to create a rectangle for each of these. And I've set the height and the width and the location. And for the width, I've just told it to do 10 times the value in here since it goes up to 500 and we want 50 to take the full width and then 10 to take up one fifth so it'll be 100 200 300 400 500 now this works fine for now but if we were to change this width to 300 for example what happens is the bars are still 10 times d so for 50 it'll still be 10 times 50 which is 500 and the SVG area isn't big enough to contain this so the bars have gone outside and we can't really compare them anymore so this is where scales come in so the first thing we'll do is we'll create a scale for the width so we'll say let width scale equals and then the method we call to create a scale is d3 dot scale linear and to this, we need to give it a domain and a range. So the domain is the set of values that can go in as the input. So we'll call the domain method here. And then we pass in an array with two items. The first item is the lowest number it can be, and it'll be zero. And the second number is the highest it can be. And for this example, it only goes as high as 50. So we can just put 50. The next thing we need to do is give it the range and the range is the range of values that the output can be. So again, zero is the smallest we'll have. And since we're returning the width here, we want the maximum to just be whatever the width of the SVG area is to make sure it doesn't go over. So I'm just gonna pass in width here. Now what this method does is it'll take in a number between zero and 50 and it will return an appropriate width. So for example, if it took in 30, it would return 300, because 30 is the same proportion between zero and 50 as is 300 between zero and the width, which is 500. So now instead of returning 10 times D, we can just call the width scale and we can pass in D. And that's done exactly the same as before because the width is 500. Now, if I were to change the width to 300 or 250, oops, as you can see, the bars scale themselves proportionally and the distance, the proportional distance between the bars hasn't been impacted. Now, this challenge is actually a lot more simple than this. All it wants us to do is create a linear scale and then assign it to this scale variable, and then call that method with an argument of 50 at output. So the first thing is we'll just create the linear scale, and that's done using d3.scale linear. And we don't need to give a domain and range because they haven't told us to do it. And then just call the scale method with an argument of 50. And that's all we need, so I'm just gonna run it now. And yeah, we'll look at improving this in the next challenge.